So welcome to, to the seminar, which we've grandly titled Continuing to Provide an Empathetic Service While Managing the Demands of a Pandemic. It's very kindly been sponsored today by the CDS Group, who will be one of our speakers today, and we'll, we'll explain a little bit about what they do and, and the relevance to local authorities. So thank you very much to Justin. In 2020 so far, we've had eight referrals, taken on five of those, and three of them came in during the first few weeks of the pandemic. The second and bigger issue in terms of safety of staff was whether property searches could or should still go ahead. So we concluded after liaising with our health and safety team and taking into account um, the advice we'd received um, that we would continue to carry out the searches on a case by case basis using the details we could obtain from the informant at the initial referral stage. Justin's organisation has a wide range of cemetery and crematoria development, open space design and environmental solution expertise. And one of the things, obviously, more and more local authorities are being asked to look at the, how they, their services impact on the environment. And if we were to convert that into carbon car kilometres, to put things in perspective, that would mean a car would be travelling at around, well, have to travel around about 1.2 million kilometres in order to produce that much carbon. And that is just obviously from one, from one crematorium. And if you sort of calculated what the weight of these headstones would be over a 10 acre site, it would come to approximately 680 tonnes. And that has a carbon effect as well, because they have to be imported all the way from China or all from India. And when you look at the, the level of embodied carbon in those headstones in your cemetery of 10 acres, it's around about 282 tonnes of carbon. And again, going back to the, the carbon car kilometres, that's around about 2.3 million kilometers in order to, to offset that one. The last element of what we're looking at is in the groundwater itself. Part of what we've been doing over the last few years is, is monitoring uh, cemeteries using groundwater testing. We're doing quite a large range of, of groundwater testing at the moment as part of the, the pandemic planning. And, and some of the data coming out is it's really quite quite scary. But there are other elements that are in the body that are not so natural. And those elements are things like embalming fluid. Now, in embalming fluid, it's made up of chemicals such as formaldehyde and methanol. And on some of the sites that we've been monitoring, we've been finding formaldehyde coming through in, in the groundwater monitoring points. And the background allowable level for formaldehyde in groundwater is zero. In other words, there should be any, but, but we are finding formaldehyde downstream of cemeteries? How can we reduce the levels of toxins coming into our cemetery? How do we know what those toxins are? So I think really it's something that we can do and we can address, but it just takes that initial push and that initial incentive from, from the industry as a whole or even from the individuals. A lot of crematoria have a book of remembrance and one thing that I found interesting when I first came to the Burial and Cremation Service is it's unique to the crematorium. Each link takes you to the relevant crematoriums web page on their website this is what the, the person who was visiting that page would see it means um you know your relatives who live in canada or or down the road from you can virtually go and see the book the big thing that that we were coming up against um was difficulties with regards to procuring the correct ppe um, the market was saturated with substandard PPE. Nationally, across our funeral homes, we have now increased capacity. Um, so to put that into perspective, one of our funeral homes in Scotland now have, can hold an additional 100 deceased. The, the headline on this first slide really says it all, because um, a number of people said we will be ready next time. We don't know when next time is going to be, and we don't know how we're going to deal with it, but I think the following slides will demonstrate to those who are interested, that uh, some big moves have been made over the last few weeks to get to make sure we are ready next time. So that's what this uh, slide presentation is all about. Because this is a very sensitive service, I think. There's, there's no doubt about that, and you can't get things wrong. And we are dealing with real issues here with real people. So I think the approaches that people have taken have been tremendous.